This program is part of the Cosmic Potato Podcast Network. For more shows like this, visit our website at cosmicpotatonetwork.com. Watching television, watching television. Watching television, watching television. I need all the image, I need all the sound. I know the info right into my mind. Hey everybody, welcome back to Try by Pilot. This is the show where we judge an entire series of television and the work of hundreds on one episode. I'm Bill Lynch. I'm Elizabeth Lynch. And I have some important news before we talk about today's show i have a question for you and you're not going to know the answer oh okay Uh, (laughs) (laughs) we did the pilot to the falcon and the winter soldier last week and at the end of that episode they reveal the new captain america Mm -hmm. who looks pretty goofy Right. right do you know who that is and they don't they didn't show his face, so I expect you to have absolutely no clue whatsoever. So I could just guess anything. <laughs> they do show him in the second episode, and I knew I knew him from somewhere. The actor. Yeah, but I couldn't put my finger on it, and then I googled it, and I was like, "Oh, he's uh, he's from Peaky Blinders." No. Okay, I don't know. You said it confidently. <laughs> <laughs> I know that was my plan. He was Dud from Lodge Forty Nine on AMC. <laughs> Oh my God! There was no way I was going to guess that. I know. <laughs> the main guy. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I never. Well, I mean, we only watched the pilot to that. So. Yeah. Yeah. Although I heard good things. I heard good things. <laughs> Do you think we'll go back? No. Nope. <laughs> no. Only ahead. Forever yeah. moving ahead. Always forward, never back. Mm-hmm. What's that from? I think you just made it up. No, it's in something I like no, literally just uh, read or saw. You or... made it up. <laughs> Today we are talking about The Irregulars on Netflix. Based on the writings of Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. Mm. Famous My favorite. author of Sherlock Holmes. I've never read it. <laughs> I don't know. Neither have I. <laughs> Or watched any of the other Sherlock Holmes, like, I don't know, what would you call them? Not spinoffs, but... What, TV shows? Yeah, there, I feel like there have been, like, a lot of different oh, like, sure, remakes yeah. of, like, movies and shows and... Yeah, I don't think I've consumed almost any Sherlock Holmes content in my entire life. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> Although I did see a play, a play called Absurd Person Singular by Arthur Conan Doyle in college, which was hilarious. Really? I don't know how true to uh, the original it was, but okay. it was very entertaining. That was from my theater appreciation class I took in college. I was very well-rounded. Wow. Yeah. Tell us more. Um, <laughs> I had a big beer belly. and <laughs> 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 All right. Shall we talk about the Irregulars? Um, sure. I just think it's funny that... <laughs> You took one theater appreciation class and you're like, I was really well-rounded. Like, I know the arts <laughs> and theater. Yeah. Just like whatever. It's like one theater appreciation class. Sounds good to me. So because like I took a... What? Did I take any science classes in college? <laughs> yeah, I'm actually trying to think. Oh, I think maybe I took like an earth science class oh, freshman that's year i like literally like filled the requirement and then moved on i probably yeah. took psych 101 hmm. wow this really backfired on me because <laughs> <laughs> i literally took only theater classes in college <laughs> oh, i took a class i think it was called like space place and location <laughs> yes i remember do you remember this I, do. I think didn't you take the dinosaurs class too i don't remember apparently the dinosaurs class was tougher than people thought it was oh really yeah but i took this class i, I maybe it must have been my freshman year it must have been and so i went to a couple classes it was at eight o'clock in the morning on whatever a wednesday and I quickly realized, oh, this is one of those college classes people talk about where you don't actually go to the class. <laughs> and so I never went to a single class for the rest of the semester except the exams. And it was so easy. Like, like what was it? Oh, uh, it was like geography, history, 
I mean, like at the most base level, it was so easy. Like, I think I sk- maybe skimmed the text that we had and I like aced every exam. It was really, yeah. Well, that's the story of your life. <laughs> well, but th- this class in particular was like known for that. Like it was supposed to be a gimme class. I took a, a women's studies class in college that like was like, it was one of those classes that everyone's like, oh, this is so easy. And the professor was somebody that everybody really liked. And so it's just such a shame now, like when I think about it, because it's like the books that we had to read were really interesting and would have made us think if like the class required us to really dig deep into them. Right. But like our main objective through that entire semester was watching The Apprentice (laughs) to see like women in business i guess Good and then business. like one day we there was like it was the season where they had like made ice cream and one of them made like red velvet ice cream and one team made donut ice cream and like she bought them and brought them into the class and we ate them was it good it was all right but like that was our women's studies class <laughs> what was <laughs> just like what was the donut flavored ice cream it was like vanilla with donuts in it oh that is boring yeah the whole thing was stupid. <laughs> when we actually talked about like the text and like, you know, her personal story, it was like, oh, but like, I just don't think that like anyone really got anything out of it. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, the class sounds dumb, but I'm more concerned about the ice cream flavor. Like a donut isn't a flavor. I know. It's a food type that you incorporate other flavors into. Yeah, there wasn't anything else about it. It wasn't like it was like, ooh, glazed vanilla ice cream with like donut crumbles. Right. Lazy. Kind of. Lazy. Uh, I took a gender studies class as well Mm -hmm. in college. And uh, actually, there was a... (laughs) young woman by the name of tina i think you know her she was in my class oh right and we were the two most involved and engaged people in that class (laughs) and then like i don't know x number of years later she's now my sister-in-law yeah (laughs) my brother brought her home and over for dinner and you were like don't i know you (laughs) that's so funny Oh, college. Anywho. Simpler times. Mm-hmm. Simpler times. All right. Shall we delve into this show? I guess so. The Irregulars on Netflix. Very intrigued to hear how this the play you read you saw was hilarious. What? Like, because I didn't think that this was hilarious. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? It like was, it, it was completely, completely different. Completely different. Oh, totally, okay. totally. Yeah. So this is based on stories from sherlock holmes where he would like use like street urchins and like kids in london to like dig out information for him okay and then i think there were also rumors or was sherlock holmes even real i don't think so obviously not (laughs) shrugs because just want to be as embarrassed as i am right now (laughs) i was about to ask you the question i was like i'm just gonna go with what i know (laughs) <laughs> isn't that funny though that we don't know that because sherlock holmes is like i don't know if, what like what's no, the right word for it he's not i just said rumors for some reason even though i meant to use a different word <laughs> i think part of the story was people didn't know if he was an alcoholic or a drug addict and like actually these kids were solving the crimes and he was just taking credit for it so sherlock holmes i just looked it up and sherlock holmes was modeled off of a real person but oh, he's that's a why character. I was confused. Yeah, because I read a bunch of stuff on the guy he was modeled after. Yeah, Doctor Joseph Bell. Yeah, I took a class on Joseph Bell <laughs> ology in college. <laughs> that's stupid. Um, <laughs> I no, I feel really dumb because, like, for a second, I really was like, "Wait a second, is he real?" Because Jack the Ripper was real, and I guess I was just thinking that. <laughs> <laughs> They're both from London. <laughs> They're both from London a long time ago. Anyway. You know what's cultured? <laughs> London, England. All right. Boy, wow. We didn't even start talking about this pilot. Yet, I guys. know. <laughs> Come on. There is a young woman with a lantern going through some caverns and some like strange blurred figures rush by her and she enters this big 
cavernous room with skeletons everywhere. Not like animated skeletons, just like dead stuff. Right. But then something emerges from behind some rocks, I guess, and grabs her. And she wakes up from this dream she was having with her friend there. They're both sleeping on the floor of this room in this like kind of dilapidated house in London. Mm -hmm. And the next day they wake up and we find out it's her friend's birthday. Her friend is B. Beatrice mm -hmm. and this uh, the main character is Jesse. Well, actually, B was like a little more than the main character, but Jesse's kind of poking fun at her into like finding a boyfriend because she never dates, mm -hmm. and she says shenanigans a bunch, and then B says, "Stop saying shenanigans." <laughs> and we were both <laughs> couldn't stop laughing. I swear to God, I'll pistol whip the next guy who says shenanigans. <laughs> and then they're like, "Uh oh, where are Billy and Spike? Their other roommates." And they're in some like underground fighting ring and Billy takes his shirt off and he's this like scrawny guy uh, with scars across his chest and back. Mm -hmm. And he's about to fight some like behemoth guy who like would clearly just pound yeah, him into nothing. He's not going to win. When B shows up and stops the fight. And I'm glad they stopped it because I was like, are they really going to try to make us believe that he's going to win against this <laughs> yeah. guy? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So they're all back home and they're having a conversation about not being able to pay rent this month. And there's a very strange scene where B gets upset and like hides under a blanket. And then the two guys go over under the blanket and like it's just close ups of their faces going back and forth. Yeah. It's just like a weird visual choice. It was also just awkward that she was like, I'm going to go like she it's not like she went into her room under a blanket. She just looked at them and like stomped over like. Five feet away from them, <laughs> went right under the blanket, and they were like, okay, we got to go get her from that blanket. Yeah. Like, this is a thing they do. Right. Awkward. And so, Jesse was sleeping while this was going on, but wanders outside and has a vision of this, like, tall, creepy plague doctor wandering the streets, mm -hmm. or at least he has a plague doctor mask on, and she almost gets hit by a horse-drawn carriage, which is carrying the prince uh, who apparently isn't allowed at the palace anymore and like isn't allowed to go out by himself because of his delicate constitution and we find out later he's a hemophiliac i think yeah i think that's what they said um and so he very much enjoys watching b tell off his handler basically like the guy yeah. who's watching over him you're saying he's not allowed out of the palace right yeah or like anywhere Right, okay, because it sounded yeah. like you said he's not allowed at the palace. Oh, did I, I just say wanted that? to clear oh, it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So wait, where was he going in this carriage, do you know? He wanted to go for his birthday. He wanted to go out and see London. Ah. Uh, he wanted to go see the city, and so his mother allowed it if his handler went and he sat in the carriage the whole time. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. And so B is chased by this figure who ends up being Dr. Watson. If you're familiar with the Sherlock Holmes stories, as I am, you would know that uh, his partner was a Dr. Watson. <laughs> I do know that. I know so much about it, but like, how? <laughs> oh, I mean, come on. Sherlock Holmes is like cultural osmosis. You just know who Sherlock yeah, Holmes Yeah, that's Watson what I are. mean. It's like, I've never yeah, yeah. seen anything, but like, I know who, sure. who they all are. Yeah. Like, and like what he says. And you say like, elementary, my... Dear Watson or something yeah. like that. And so he wants her and her friends to help out with some of the investigations that they're working on in London. They're reputable men. They don't have access to like certain seedy parts of London. And he tells her that most recently four babies have vanished, including one last night. The windows were locked from the inside and only a large black feather was found underneath the crib. And this baby's sister was in the room and claims she didn't see or hear anything happen. Mm -hmm. So he tells B, you know, go find this sister that was in the room, question her, find out what she knows. Something's not adding up. And so, you know, she enlists the help of her, her roommates. But basically, like, it's four poor orphans that are all living together. And I, like, have yeah. kind of taken on each other as their adopted family. Yeah, basically. So Spike finds the sister easily. And so they ask him how, and he retells this like trail of people that he's been talking to. And like, we see the scenes, but it's all in his voice, which was like kind of funny, 
but so strange in the context of what we've already seen of this show so far. Yes. And I felt like this happened occasionally. It did. <laughs> yes. This is where I'm going to bring up um, something that Bill normally Don't brings up. Don't you say it. Don't you say it. <laughs> but the tone was strange. <laughs> it was so strange. <laughs> we'll come back to that in a little bit. And so they find the sister who admits that she snuck out that night and left the window open, but she didn't want to get in trouble by telling her mom that. Mm -hmm. But it was still three floors up. So how did someone get up there? She has also been hearing strange noises the past five nights, scratching and cawing. And suddenly, as she's telling them this, a raven flies by and scratches her face and it starts to bleed. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, like dozens, maybe even hundreds of ravens start swooping down yeah. on them. And so they're all running through the streets trying to get away from these birds. And I forget who it was. Maybe B and Billy hide in like a little shack. Yeah. Like a little wooden shack as the ravens are like smashing into it and trying to peck their way in. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, it's just like the whole thing shaking. It's made out of like little pieces of wood. Yeah. Like and, like in the slats kind of. Yeah. Trying and to you get see in. like the ravens yeah. like slowly pecking away at it and it's getting thinner and thinner. But then suddenly they all fly away and the two of them leave. They find Spike and then they find the girl on the ground with her eyes pecked out. And it was horrific. Yeah, we get like a close up of her face oh, with no was... eyes and like scratch marks all around her eyeballs. And like based eyeballs. off of the tone of the rest of the... <laughs> Sorry, what did you say? <laughs> First I said around her eyeballs, but those weren't there. So then I said eye holes, which <laughs> technically is correct, but eye sockets I think is more <laughs> appropriate. Okay, I'm glad I had you repeat all of that. Yeah. Um based on the tone of like what we've seen so far i was not <laughs> expecting to be like really like horrified by something so, like, so strange graphically gruesome yeah because this scene is right after the other scene which is like so clearly goofy on purpose yeah. where, where he's retelling the story and it's like all in his voice like it was supposed to be a funny goofy scene yeah like very lighthearted. and then you see a close-up of a young woman's eyes ripped out of her head yeah <sighs> anyway, Gross. Uh, now we go back to the prince who is fantasizing about B and he sneaks out and this was another weird thing of yes. like a silly, like flashback kind of thing. Yeah. It wasn't a flashback, but you know, and he overpays for a beer and accidentally propositions a prostitute, like classic fish out of water prince stuff. Right. Um, <laughs> classic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but then he recognizes the bar where the incident happened the other night. And mm -hmm. so he finds B outside who was just given more information by Watson. And I think she caught a glimpse of like a, a coughing Sherlock Holmes in the other room, like on the couch. Mm -hmm. So anyway, Leo, the prince introduces himself, but doesn't tell her that she's doesn't tell her he's a prince and awkwardly tells her about this raven feather. He knows a lot about birds. <laughs> Yeah, he knows a lot about everything. Allaboutbirds.org. You guys should check that site out. It's really good if you need uh, <laughs> information on any bird species. And he helps her figure out that all of these babies were born on the same day at the same hospital, St. Mary's. He basically picks up the dossier that she has, leafs through it like one time. And he's like, well, they were all born on the same day. Like... <laughs> And this raven wouldn't be... It's, it's odd that you found this raven because ravens aren't around here. Maybe, you know, and this is the color of it and the feather and like, it's just... Hey, he reads a lot of ornithology books. I guess so. <laughs> it so, just was like a little too quick and convenient oh, that he knew everything. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it That's was. All. This happened a couple times too. And I have this as a note. A couple times B did the same thing. Yeah. Where, like nothing has happened. She's done no research or even thought about it. And she just goes... Wait, it must be this. And then right. they go to a spot. And then that's just what it is. <laughs> right, right. And I was, it's like not, it's not satisfying. Yeah. You yeah. know? <laughs> so anyway, they go to the town hall and they find only one baby is remaining out of these six. I think one had passed away during childbirth and then four have already been taken. And so there's one last one. And so B and Jesse are arguing about Jesse tagging along this time. And finally, B like blurts out, like, you're a mess. Like something isn't right with you. And apparently their mom had mental health issues. And so Jesse's afraid. All of her friends think she does too. And so she storms off with Spike to go back to their house. 
Jesse and B are actually sisters, though, right? Yes. Okay. But I don't know, like by blood, or maybe they have the no, same mother. I, th- I think they have the same mother, right? They have the same mother. Yeah. Because because B was concerned, and then she was talking to a nun at some point, and she's like, "Your mother." She was like, "This is what started happening with mom." So B is concerned about Jess. Okay. Because. Yeah. Her mother had it. It was a little confusing. It's confusing because Jesse is just a white woman. Mm-hmm. B is of Asian descent. Right. Which is, you know, however you want to cast these shows, I don't care. But it's confusing if you're doing that kind of casting and like calling people sisters without giving them a backstory. Like, okay, are they really? Are they just being like flexible with? <laughs> right. Well, I mean, I think the way it's it's confusing because... The way that, like, they have all become family. Right. And you know that they're not all related. Right. But I think that, that Jess and B are yeah. actually related. Anyway, that matter matters very little. And uh, Billy sneaks into this house to take the baby for safekeeping, which is, like, such an insane fucking plan. Uh It was a terrible plan. But is distracted by the parents who are trying to get in because the baby's crying. So he's like holding the door. And as he is, a raven swoops in and steals the baby. And so they chase it to this alley where Sandor Clegane is waiting. Yes. The hound from Game of Thrones. What a crossover. (laughs) What a crossover? (laughs) I'm just kidding. (laughs) Just because you called him that. But wait, I want to go back to, to Billy's plan. The this plan that he he scales the house or whatever gets into the baby's room Mm -hmm. is nervous to pick it up so he doesn't and the baby starts crying so that's why the parents come to the door yeah right so he holds the door closed with his body then this raven takes the baby yeah and then cut to like what happens to billy like does he (laughs) hold the door and like lock it enough so he can get away (laughs) and the parents don't find him there like surely if they called the police there might be like something they'd find in an investigation like you know what i mean it just seemed yeah well he just shows up in the alley with the other two yeah but like that <laughs> that is just completely like not addressed yeah. so anyway the hound is waiting there and sees them like coming after him and he goes it's my baby and he opens up his coat and like a flock of birds flies at them and attacks them briefly not big birds just like little sparrows and so they end up figuring out that this sixth baby that passed must be a connection. He's looking for his baby. This is one of the instances where B like, oh, yeah. it must have been his baby. <laughs> and so the registry from the town hall reveals the father of this baby that passed away is an ornithologist. Ding, gotta be him. And he works at the zoo. And so because he's an ornithologist, he can just control all the ravens in the world. Well, that's explained later. Okay. <laughs> just like, that's so far down on my list of so things. It's just so funny that like that the prince, whatever his name is, is like, oh, they're all born the same day and someone must be controlling these ravens. <laughs> and it's like, okay, I think that's when I wrote the note. Like, this might be too bizarre for me. <laughs> like, I just get it. Meanwhile, Jesse is having this dream again, and she's being attacked by this guy in, uh, I don't know if it was a plague mask or if it was a raven mask. It looked like very similar to both. Yes, I couldn't, I couldn't determine it either. Uh, but a flock of white moths starts to swarm them, and then she's transported to like another dream state. Mm-hmm. And in this dream state, she's in Louisiana, and she meets Lester Freeman. From, I know. From The Wire. Yeah. Who tells her she's enlightened and... She needs to touch this man's arm to access his mind, and then they'll go into a dream state together. And so both both groups, you know, B and the guys and Jesse, arrive at this aviary at the zoo. And the guy's inside, and he calls forth all the birds of London as they start smashing against the windows and making their way inside. But Jesse sneaks up and grabs him by the arm, and so they travel into this dream state together, back through his dreams, and he realizes that His baby did die, along with his wife, who we see, like, in a pool of blood after childbirth. (laughs) Like, another, like, just dark I know. It's like, I I think I said to you, God, trigger warning. Like, you wouldn't have any idea. Yeah. And then another memory shows him asking his wife for help finding their baby. 
uh, not his physical life, just like, you know, asking the Mm -hmm. spirits and he gains supernatural powers like through a Ouija board or some shit. He has like an upside down shot glass over a Ouija board. And then then as he's, as he's like asking, (laughs) as he's like pleading to the heavens, the shot glass starts like moving around the Ouija board and he goes over and touches the board and like blue energy shoots through him and he becomes like Birdman, Birdman. Like what the fuck? (laughs) Strange. (laughs) So they come out of the dream state and now it's daytime in the aviary and they're off the steps that they were on. Okay, whatever. (laughs) And so B realizes Watson said something about her sister. And so she storms over there as he's fighting with someone, I guess Sherlock Holmes, telling them like, get out, never come back. And some guys like leaving through the window. I guess it was Holmes. Uh, She wants to know how he knew that they were sisters. And he's like, well, we've actually been watching Jesse for a while. She has a gift. And when you spend so long fighting demons, you learn how to recognize angels. Ooh. And... (laughs) that's a good line yeah and then he starts talking about this great darkness that's coming to london and what you saw last night was only just the beginning ominous music dark cloud passes over the the end of the pilot of the irregulars what did you think (sighs) all right i'm not i'm (laughs) trying to click and a deep sigh wow all right i don't know I don't have the patience for this show. I'm just going to say that right off the bat. Because <laughs> it really was way too all over the place. Yeah. I didn't mind the stuff with Jess as far as like the dream sequence. And and that might actually be interesting. Um, and I thought that those scenes were kind of well done. Like as far as her like actually like entering the dream sequence. And sure. I thought she was a good actress. And she seems just as confused about this as everyone else. And yeah. I thought that she was good. And that if that were really what this was about, great. If it's going to be about like poorly solved crimes, <laughs> that they're just going to continue to like quickly solve these crimes. Like this show, like I wasn't sure if it was going to be like episodic or not. Yeah. But so it seems like it sort of is because I was like, oh, is this going to be about birds, this show? Like, no, <laughs> this episode is them solving this crime right. about these birds very quickly. Not a satisfying, like, detective work no. at all. No. At all. For for a show to be based on Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> right. Or at least, like, in that realm. Yeah. Uh, that I didn't like. Yeah. I also was just... You know, some of some of the cinematography was cool, like the the shots of London had yeah. like like you know, like a filter on them that kind of gave it like a gritty Yeah. But like a pop feel. And I said <laughs> I wrote it has a gritty but also pop feel, like it's the television equivalent of Evanescence and maybe Incubus. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> That's what came to mind. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I yeah. didn't have any... It was just so odd. Yeah, I, I felt the same way. I I wanted to like this show because I thought that it had a unique and somewhat intriguing premise. You know, Sherlock Holmes using these kids to help solve cases as he deals with addiction. There's like some dark supernatural undercurrent. Yeah. And, you know, I think even while we were watching, I was trying to convince myself to like it more. Yeah. Um, the, the pilot just was not tight. Some of the some of the elements did work, like a lot of the stuff you mentioned, like some of the acting and cinematography, some of that supernatural stuff was intriguing, but it never came together into anything. Right. And I read that apparently it is a bit like monster of the week, like... They have a different case to solve each week, but about halfway through the season, uh, it becomes more of an arc about this like overarching supernatural thing that's going on and becomes a little bit tighter, which is good. I mean, I think that could theoretically be a good show. I don't think that I have the patience to sit through half of the season of them figuring it out. Yeah. And I also don't have the patience to deal with this like very horny prince Who's going to pine over <laughs> B and then Billy is going to get jealous well, of, course. of him pining over B. Listen. And then, and then the, who is the other guy? Who is the other kid with them? Spike. With Spike. And then he's just going to be like 
like goofy and really good at figuring out stuff that no one else can figure out. Right, right. <sighs> oh, I just talked to them and I got I got the key for this house. You know, like it's going to be like <laughs> shit like that. Yeah. <sighs> Clearly, Netflix has an algorithm that they like and it's fucking British accents and teens, horny teens. Yeah. <laughs> and they're just going to cram it down our throats until everyone's tired of it. I also noted that like there was one scene I think where like B was being oh it's when B was running away from Watson. Yes. Before like you know she knew who he was. And I thought god London is scary. <laughs> and it just reminds me of like I don't know exactly what year this is, but it's like it just made me think of like maybe it's around the same time as uh I don't know there's like no electricity. It's probably like uh, 19th century. So probably later than Les Mis was. Yeah, I think so. But like, and that's Paris. But you know what I mean? Like just that like, like just dirty streets. Yeah. You know, dark, cold, and creepy. Yeah, I don't think that we can stress enough how strange the tone of this show was. <sighs> it, I mean, the goofy scenes were so deliberately silly and trying to be campy. And then there are these scenes with like, a dead mother or a woman with her eyes pecked out. Mm -hmm. They're solving a case about stolen babies. Like it was so mismatched. That was the other thing that I was like, I don't, I don't like this. Like this is really creepy. Like right away when they started talking about the Kate, like the, these babies being stolen. Yeah. It's like, I don't want to watch a show about this. Yeah. Now it's going to be a different case next week and the babies have all been returned. But like, this was just such an odd thing to start with. Yeah. I mean, I almost want to go back and watch it to like really like focus and pay attention on each scene to see how strange the shift <laughs> is from each one. Even the scene of her talking to the nun in the cemetery late at night in a cemetery. It's fucking dark. That's when she's going to go visit <laughs> her mother's grave and a nun is there. And then the nun walks away and can't hear anything of this like man chasing her. Right. Like, what the also, hell? why doesn't he just call out? B, I want to talk to you. He, I know. <laughs> he literally chases her through B, a graveyard. I know your name. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, we've seen some shows where it doesn't seem like it should work totally, and it does, but you have to do it so smartly, and this just felt sloppy. It, th that's exactly what it felt like. Right? Like, yeah, he, yeah. oh, here's a funny idea for a scene. Let's do this. They don't, and not caring where it fits in the context of these other scenes that do not match it at all, you know? Yeah. And I mean, you know, separately, both parts like had their moments. Like there were, there was like a funny moment or a funny line here and there in the show. And some of the darker scenes like were a little bit scary and like well done cinematography, but like, man, they just did not mesh together at all. Yeah, and some of the scenes felt like you were watching a movie, and some of them felt like you were watching a play being recorded. Like, some of the sets, like, wherever yes. it was, like, in their house. Like, I had no... I couldn't get a good, like, feel for the layout of it. It felt very much like it was on stage. Yeah. You know what I mean? And yeah. And them being, like, in the street felt like they were on stage. Like, her talking to the nun in the cemetery felt like... Right. A set on stage like it was it was so odd because not everything felt like that because when she went into you know to watson's house or i guess sherlock holmes house or whatever that felt very much like a movie yeah or a tv show i should say yeah yeah also i think if you're going to do a show about solving these crimes it has to be more interesting than the way they solve them because as yeah. a tv viewer who's like looking for that element. I was so bored by it. Like mm -hmm. there was nothing for me to try to solve along with these characters. Like I couldn't relate to them because they weren't showing you any clues. They looked at a ledger. Oh, it must be this. And then they go yeah. and sure enough, that's right. Exactly. Like what the fuck? <laughs> uh, yeah, it was, it was just a little lazy and sloppy. Yeah. Wasn't the worst show we've seen, but it, it left, it left a lot to be desired. And I think mm -hmm. overall I was a little, a little let down because I had high hopes, hopes for it. Yeah. I hope so. Um, so I probably will not be recommending this and I don't think I'm going to keep watching. It. Yeah, I'm not going to keep watching it either. There's another show coming out in April that I also have high hopes for 
So I'm going to save my time okay, <laughs> in, in case I want to watch that one. Uh, yeah. I mean, just knowing that like, oh, like halfway through this season and like they're full 60 minute episodes. Like, yeah. I'm not going to sit through four more of these or three more of these, like waiting for it to potentially get right. better. Right. And even then, is it great? I don't know. Maybe, maybe it is. Um, but that's the luxury of, at least for us, when I read reviews about Netflix shows is the reviewers have already seen all eight episodes. All of it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so if people aren't saying it's great, it's probably not that great. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't, I probably wouldn't recommend it. I think there are other shows that do all of these elements better. Yeah. It's not terrible if you're into like these individual elements, like all of them. Like if you want a period piece in, in London that, solves crimes and has a supernatural thing sure go for it mm -hmm. you might be bored maybe you'll really like it but otherwise eh, you probably skip it yeah agreed anything else this week no because i feel like i haven't watched anything new and we haven't really caught up on anything so i feel like we don't t tv wise we don't have anything really to yeah to discuss with our yeah, we, listeners we actually binged and finished a bunch of shows like last month and now we got nothing yeah <laughs> <laughs> Ugh. keep slowly working our way through 30 rock we're almost done yeah all right everybody if you have suggestions on shows for us to watch email us at trialbypilot at gmail.com you can find us on facebook instagram and twitter at trial by pilot and please go on to apple podcast stitcher spotify wherever you're listening to this subscribe to the show leave a review and tell a friend and thank you to the beats for providing our theme music thanks beats bye. okay bye <laughs> adios <laughs>